Hello, my name is Laura Ann Ewald, and I would like to share with you today my books on writing. I have The Power of Story, using good storytelling to leave a lasting impression. I have The Power of Story 2, which is using research to add reality to your story. And I have The Power of Story 3, making your own. In these three books, I take you from what it means to be to write a story and what how storytelling has affected us throughout history to how to do research so you get it right and this is really good for both fiction and nonfiction writers because as a former librarian I do the research thing a lot and then this one has to do with critical thinking strategic thinking about your topic to get it into a size whether it's a short story or a novel or a magazine article or even a book um, even a thesis uh, school academic paper would be good for this. So that's what we're doing. And what I'm going to do first is read, I'd like to read a, a, the opening of this book on the power of story because I really love storytelling and I know a lot of people who like to write, um, who want to write, and um, this will give you an idea of my books on writing. Chapter one, the story. We do as a species like our stories. It's in our DNA. I am convinced to always give more than Joe Friday's Just the Facts, Ma'am. We not only want to hear and tell what happened, we also want to know the complete who, what, when, where, why, and how that goes along with the what. If you need proof, just look at the evening news. Learning there was a terrific pileup on I-10 isn't enough. We want to know every little detail, from who was involved, to the injuries incurred, to whose fault it was, to how long it took to clean it up. And the final score of a football or basketball game isn't enough either. We want to know exactly why and how one team won and the other team lost, and what all the players and coaches have to say about it. As Paul Harvey put it, we want to know the rest of the story. From the days of living in caves, man has presented a whole lot more than just the facts when talking about anything going on in our world. Even in those pictures painted in the deep dark caves of Europe and elsewhere, man was telling a story for the artists did not only illustrate the hunt they created a pictorial narration of what went on it's fascinating really the storyteller has been revered long since long before we could read and write for just this reason it was the storyteller the bard who kept traditions going from one generation to the next their stories not only entertained they educated they gave us as a people a center and an identity. It was the storytellers traveling from town square to village screen, from stage to campfire, who told the stories that kept us connected to one another, to our past, and to our future. And if you think the importance of a story has been lost over the centuries, then you haven't attended a John Grisham book signing or even waited in line an opening for a new Star Wars movie. We really do love our stories. So what is a story? There are probably nearly as many definitions of the word story as there are readers and writers, but let's look at the basic definitions of the ma by the masters. Merriam-Webster defines story as, quote, a fictional narrative shorter than a novel, specifically short story, or, quote, the intrigue or plot of a narrative or dramatic work. The Oxford English Dictionary uses fancier language to say much the same thing. A narrative of real or more usually fictitious events designed for the entertainment of the hearer or reader, a series of traditional or imaginary incidents forming the matter of such a narrative's tale. So whether we are talking about prehistoric pictures painted on a cave wall, a dime novel, or the latest and greatest from the New York Times bestsellers list, a story is a narrative concerning the who, what, when, where, why, and how of a character or event real or fictitious. And we, human as we are, want to know the details. And that's why the U.S. retail bookstores alone sold $10.73 billion worth of books in 2017, which doesn't include ebooks and other online sales from sources like Amazon. This is really good news for both readers and writers. I think C.S. Lewis said it best. Quote, the value of the myth is that it takes all the things we know and restores them to, to rich significance when it has been hidden by the veil of familiarity. The child enjoys his cold meat, otherwise dull to him, 
by pretending it is buffalo just killed by his own bow and arrow. And the child is wise. The real meat comes back to him more savory for having been dipped in a story. You might say that only then is it the real meat. If you are tired of the real landscape, look at it in a mirror. By putting bread, gold, horse, apple, or the very roads into a myth, we do not retreat from reality, we rediscover it. As long as the story lingers in our mind, the real things are more themselves. Storytelling really is in our DNA. We read, we watch TV, we go to the movies. However, we access this thing called story, and we want all the details, fiction or nonfiction. We want the whole story. Now the question becomes, what makes a good story that lasts? And that's what the rest of this book is about. And then when you're ready to do some research and start writing your story, you'll want to read Power Story 2. And when you want to think critically about that topic you have in your head, how can you put it into a story or a paper or a short story or a newspaper article? Then you can look at Power Story 3, making it yours. Thank you.